Do you hear what I've just said? There are helpers and there are helpers. That is number one word the Lord asked me to declare over you this morning. When the Lord was giving it to me, I thought it's going to be a prayer point, but the Lord said, no, declare it upon them. So I, I want to hear your voice upon everyone this morning. Say it again to yourself. Say, tireless helper. Now, there are some helpers. You know, there are some people that will tell you, I'm set to help you over this matter. After about a few days, you go back there, the person keeps misbehaving. He's tired already. But there are some helpers, if he doesn't accomplish the purpose why God raised him for you, he will never go back. Rebecca refused to go back. Even when the journey got to a level that the boy was showing him, showing her the danger. He said, Mommy, if my father discovered that I'm the one, he's going to cost me. So at this point, I think we should back out. But do you know what Rebecca said? Rebecca said, let the cost come upon me. I'm set to carry the cost. If your father costs you, it won't rest on you. It will rest on me. That's a tireless helper. I speak over everyone under the sound of my voice this morning. Online, on ground, a tireless helper is coming for you. In your career, in your finance, in your marriage, a tireless helper. Helper that will not be tired until you succeed. Helper that will not be tired until you break forth. Helper that will not be tired until you testify. How many of us remember the woman called Anna in the Bible? Anna kept on praying. She's a widow. She refused to keep quiet until the day Jesus was brought for dedication. He said, now my eyes have seen the salvation of Israel. Not just salvation of Israel, but the salvation of the whole world. And that woman has been in temple for donkey years. Praying that Lord, salvation will come. This salvation will come. Nothing will truncate it. Nothing will truncate it. Nothing will stop it. Nothing will fight it. The woman keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Until the day they came for dedication. And he said, Jesus, the salvation of the whole world is coming for dedication today. The woman rejoiced. You know the number of years the woman be praying. He said, now I can go to my grave. My eyes have seen the salvation. My eyes have seen the person that the Lord talked to me about several years back. I decree this morning, there are tireless helpers everywhere. God will speak about you to them. And from this morning, they are coming your way. I said they are coming your way. I said they are coming your way. I said they are coming your way. In the mighty name of Jesus. The number two declaration this morning is grace. Now listen to me. There is great grace of and there is grace for. But I'm not praying for grace for this morning. I am declaring the grace of this morning. The grace of getting there on time. There are many of us, we get to wherever we desire to get to very late. Very late. But from this morning, that yoke is destroyed. Grace of getting there on time. Grace of getting there on time is resting upon somebody especially all of you that are fathers and mothers i want you to receive it for your children this morning that they will get there on time that they will get there on time that they will get there on time there is a place that god is taking your children there is a place that god is taking you yourself there is a place God is taking your spouse. There is a place God is taking you in the journey of life and destiny. I proclaim death upon you this morning. You will get there on time. Do you know there are some land of fulfillment that if you get there late, people will no more congratulate you. Talk to me, church. They will no more congratulate you. They will no more congratulate you. Why? Because they have expected it to have happened in your life even when you are much, much younger. 
So you are now getting there. Well, you glorify God that at last I got there. But like somebody that passed through fire. Why there are some people they have gotten there in their, in their early 20s. Some people have gotten there in their early 30s. They've gone there, they bypass it. In fact, it's no longer in news in their lives. Is somebody hearing me this morning? There was a time we were watching television, we were watching Nigerian news one time, and they are, they are talking about one man that passed out of Unilang at the age of 70, first degree. Sir, you must know that there is a difference between a man that got his first degree certificate at the age of 70 and a young boy that got his first degree certificate at the age of 22. You must know. Number one, that man is getting the certificate just for the sake of getting it. Every one of you that are here, you can't have a company and employ a man of 70 as your manager. That would be stupidity of the highest order. It simply means your brain is working behind. At the age of 70, you are bringing in a man as your sales rep. You must know that the strength of that man cannot carry the vigor or the rigor, the rigor of that work. It's some of the enemy now. So, it's, my, it's, it's not just my prayer now. The Lord asked me to declare it upon you this morning. You will get there on time. You will get there on time. I don't know where God is taking you, but I know he's taking you somewhere. And I declare upon you this morning, you will get there on time. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your twins and say, Lord, I will get there on time. Say it louder. Declare it upon yourself. I will get there on time. I will get into success on time. I will get into my breakthrough on time. I will get into my glory on time. I will get into my testimony on time. I will get there 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 on time. Oh, thank you, ancient of days. Oh, blessed be your holy name. Repa soka parande. Jibre sato kolimbre yata. Ruse seli bayede de. Makreta no suta kayade. Legedibas kotayeda. Rabadede yede. Lakete mosku tayade. Rababa zanda kayabalaba. Oh, thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we worship. I just want to open your eyes to a certain ministry, a mystery. A certain mystery, sorry, not ministry, but mystery. I want to open your eyes to a certain secret. And you get what I'm saying now? They are, they are just part of the dealings of God with my life. And I will share it with you in the next 15 minutes before we jump out of this place. For the sake of those people that are going to their various offices. Can somebody say amen? First Kings chapter 13. First Kings chapter 13. Let's just read a few verses there. Let's read a few verses there. Oh, thank you, Lord. First Kings chapter 13. Are you there? Okay, let's start reading from verse 1. I just want to read verse 1 to 5. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Now listen to me. Jeroboam was the king. Remember, when Solomon died, when Solomon rested with his fathers, Rehoboam, his son, took over. How many of us know that? Rehoboam, his son, took over. But when the elders of Israel came to him that he should lessen their body and solve their problems, their father, the father of Jeroboam, I mean Rehoboam, which is Solomon, was a successful king, very rich, but he was a slave driver. He was a slave driver. A man of excellence who wants to push everybody to do things. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Despite he didn't wage war, but he used the people to achieve the excellence of his kingdom. But the people believe that they are under a body. So, therefore, when he slept with his father, they came to the son, Rehoboam, that let's say our body. We will do all of these things on our own will, on our own volition. So you just let's say our body, but the guy refused, so the kingdom was divided into two. You remember that? But there was one man that was like a human rights activist. When Solomon was alive, his name is Jeroboam. 
So, while Solomon was against that man, so he, he ran out of town. So he was on exile throughout the days of Solomon. So when Solomon died, he came back to city. But he didn't just come back this time around. He came back on the platform of prophetic. It's a prophetic coming. So, now, the guy refused. I won't lessen your body. My government will be tougher than the government of my father. So, the kingdom was divided into two. So, Judah and Benjamin, they went with Rehoboam, the son of Solomon. But the remaining ten tribes, they called them the tribe of Israel. They called the other one tribe of Judah. So, they went away. That's Judah and Benjamin. They are the only one that stayed where, you know, Judah is his father's house. It's his father lineage. It's his father's root. So Benjamin was emotional. Then follow Rehoboam. Now, the people of Israel, that's the remaining ten um, um, tribe, they now pick Jeroboam. You know, the enemy of his father. They pick Jeroboam to become their king. So that Jeroboam is the one the Lord is talking about here. And you get what I'm saying now? That Jeroboam is the one the Bible is talking about here. He said, Jeroboam stood by the altar. That's where I'm going this morning. Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried. Now, you must know now that he's a king. He is a king. He's standing by the altar. And you get what I'm saying now? And he cried against the altar. The word of the Lord. Now, that's the prophet that came from Judah and said, O altar, altar, Thus said the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priest of high places, and burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. It is my prophetic declaration upon you this morning. Every altar that has been raised against you, it shall be rented apart this morning. Now, that's exactly what we are dealing with in the next few minutes. Every altar that is raised against me, we are here this morning to destroy them. Destroying the altars that are raised against you. Every altars that are raised against your family. Every altar that are raised against your destiny, we are here this morning to shatter them and to destroy them. I declare this morning, every altar that is against your success and your breakthrough, all of them shall be rented apart. So, and it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in better that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, lay a hold of him. In other words, arrest him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, so that he could not pull it in again to him. The altar also was rent. I love that. The altar also was rent. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Another word for that rent is split apart, scattered. And the ashes fall out from the altar, According to, the, according to the sign which the man of God has given by the word of the Lord. Now look up everybody. Look up everybody. I've said it times without number and I'm trying to reaffirm it this morning that nations are not governed by thrones but by altars. That is why, now listen to me, anybody you see that tell you, especially those big, big people, those high, high people that tell you, well, what are you going to try to do? Pastors are just coming you these pastors are just doing this, are just doing that. Don't take their word though. There is no man under heaven that doesn't have an altar somewhere. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Nations are governed by altars, not by thrones. Our throne, the throne of Nigeria, sir. The throne of Nigeria. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The throne of Nigeria is in Asurok. Go there you will know that this is the throne of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. But let me tell you, Musa, the people that are controlling Nigeria, they are in remote villages. Habalists, Malams, some demonic prophets. You can just hear them. Look, 
Let's quickly tell you something. Between now and the next one month, you must not allow this. And you see them speak English. Sir, it's our list that gave them that order. Now, what am I trying to say, people of God, is on several occasions, don't be deceived. You see your president, you see your governor, inside the posh car with suit. There is one Baba that has never brushed his teeth for over 10 years that is giving them order of what to do. On several occasions, that's not really where I'm going this morning. On several occasions, there are many people that are here. The altar that is controlling their destiny is in their village. If that altar is not destroyed, you are going nowhere. If somebody is not hearing me this morning, they dictate your success. They dictate your door. They dictate for your helpers. They dictate everything that happens around you. You now see yourself struggling, but the altar is in control. Every one of you must know that the person who sit down, even who bought television, sitting down watching it like this, is not the owner of the TV. It's the person that holds the remote control. Somebody is not hearing me this morning. It's the person that do what? That hold the remote control. Now, go to the Bible. Go to the scripture. And go and check the life of men that have altar against contrary altar. They succeeded. Somebody is not hearing me. The Bible told us categorically that there is no place that Abraham get to that he doesn't raise altar. The moment he get to a place, he will raise an altar. The moment he get to a place, he will raise an altar. The moment he get to a place, he will raise an altar. No wonder he was wealthy. No wonder he conquers every battle. No wonder the promise of God came to pass in his life because the man of altar. A Christian that doesn't have altar to combat with contrary altar, we keep suffering in the hand of negative altars. And that is why God has established an altar for you here. So this morning, every altar that is not of God, working against your life, all of them shall be shattered. You know, when David was alive, David was a very wise king. Are you hearing what I'm saying? David was a very wise king. Very wise. I've told you times with that number, the man fought for over 40 years. If I'm more than, close to 50 years. Because he started fighting at the age of 17. He started fighting at the age of 17. The man fought and fought and fought and fought and fought and fought several battles. But do you know he never lose one? He never lose a single battle. David never lose a single battle. The one he would have lost, and he would have lost his life, was the one that they took him to the, to, to the king of Philistine. And when he got there, he had to use the wisdom of God. He had to use the understanding of God and knowledge of God. And you get what I'm saying now? He had to use the wisdom of God and behave like a madman. I believe it's wisdom of God that came upon him. But let me tell you one thing. Do you know why he didn't lose any battle? Yes. I, 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 a word came for me this morning from the Lord. The Lord said, he said, tell everyone that, you, that cares to hear you that I respect a praiser more than a warrior. I respect eh, a praise and worshiper than what? Than a warrior. But that's not where I'm going this morning. Now, the man is a praise and worshiper. But let me tell you one thing, on the altar. And that's why when David have a battle, and they say, they are laying ambush for us, the battle is about coming. He said, call me Abiata. So when Abiata come, that's a man on the altar. He's a king that is very wise. He said, bring me an effort. Inquire from the Lord. An effort simply means, bring me an altar. Oh yeah, raise altar now. Oh yeah, inquire from the Lord. Shall I go or not go? Then the Lord will say, Go. At times God will say, don't go. And whenever God said, don't go, he will refuse to go. Now, God knows what to do. The altar knows what to do to conquer the enemy of David. And the day that God will say, go, he will go. But because the Lord has gone ahead of him, he wins the battle. There is somebody here this morning. From today, you will no more lose any battle. So this morning, it is altar against altar. Somebody is not hearing me. Altar against what? Against altar. The day God wants to show his supremacy in the land of Israel at Mount Carmel, it was on the altar that God proved himself. 
The prophet of Ba raised an altar. Elijah raised an altar. It was an altar against us. And glory to God. Do you know the people that gather around the negative altar? The altar of Jezebel. They were over 400. Why? Elijah was the only one standing at the altar of the Lord. But sir, there are altars and there are altars. Holy altars swallow up every demonic altar. So every altar in your father's house, every altar in your mother's house that is controlling your life, that doesn't allow peace to reign, this morning they shall be shut up. By the mercy of the Lord. By the mercy of the Lord. By the mercy of the Lord. Listen to me. I don't care how long the altar has been raised. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The altar will be rented tonight. It will be rented this morning. Are you ready for that? Come very quickly. Thank you Holy Spirit. Thank you Holy Spirit. Somebody is going on with deliverance this morning. By the mercy of the Lord. Somebody is returning home by the mercy of the Lord. With freedom. In the mighty name of Jesus. The altar that didn't allow men to see you. Are you getting what I'm saying? The altar that didn't allow men to do what? To see you. The altar that the devil is still referring to. He's no more there physically. You know, I told you. I'm very sorry to say this. When, I, when we were very young. I've told you that story here. And I'm repeating it again this, this morning. When we were very young, there's one masquerade in our hometown. Are you get what I'm saying now? It's the masquerade of these ghostsmith people. I want to be there. Those people that are dealing with iron is their masquerade. So that masquerade comes out once in three years. Are you get what I'm saying now? When the masquerade comes out very dark, you see multitude. People don't move closer to it. Are you get what I'm saying now? And because is a is a is a is a masquerade of the local ghostmeat and want to be there those people that make cutlass that make oh it will go around the old town that masquerade will go around the old town everywhere that ghost meat has ever been he will go there and do so if they build church on top of that place he will enter sir there is one ghost meat that is around our area. I never saw it in my life. But there is one big stone on top of it. This is the stone. This is mosque. When it's coming sir, like that, you go and jump on that stone. So one day, when he jumped on that stone, I saw it from afar. So when we got home, I told my mother, I said, why did that mosque go to jump on that stone? When he said, why did that go to jump on that stone? They said they are there. The place has been dismantled. There is nothing there for over 50 years. But they know that spot. There are some of us. The author we are dealing with this morning, some people are just looking at something like this. Sir, not though. There are some blood that have been shed on the altar in your father's house over 100 years ago. And that blood is still speaking. Because you must know that blood is life. And is kicking against every child that comes from that family. But this morning, every altar that is not of God, either physical or in the realm of the spirit, all of them are shattered. <laughs> now, this is how you are going to pray. You are standing before the altar of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are standing before the altar of the Lord this morning. By the altar of the mercy this morning, you are going to raise your voice and cry out, every altar that is against my destiny, against my life. This morning, I shatter them. I rend them apart. I scatter them. Every altar that didn't allow peace in my life, I break them to pieces by the blood of the Lamb. I am standing by the altar of the Lord. I break every contrary altar in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. See, I'm going to raise this prayer in three on three platforms this morning. But listen to me. Why did Jeroboam react? Did he say, Jeroboam, you shall die? Did he say that? 
No answer me now. The scripture we read. He didn't say that. He didn't even talk to Jeroboam. But why did Jeroboam react? Jeroboam reacted because he's already dealing with his source of power. Mm. Ah, why do you are touching. Mm. This is the place where we dictate what happened in town. And you are coming to destroy it. I want you to go and declare this way. And say, Father, this morning, every declaration from negative water that is controlling my life, I render it useless by your blood. And you get what I'm saying now? Bobo or Tanti saw Niori Pepe Odi. Nori Ayemi. Because you must know, listen, you must know that negative word can, I mean, sorry, positive word cannot come from negative water. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes, negative, ne positive word, positive declaration cannot come from negative water. If water is negative, everything that will be coming from there will always be negative. And likewise, negative word cannot come from positive water. That's why, since the day God has established the author of Ways of Mercy Ministry, you will never see us to come up here and curse anybody. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is to make the life of people better. Why there are some other, in fact, every demonic altar, they are raised to destroy lives and destiny. Only God knows the number of people that have died untimely death because the altar didn't permit them and they did not know on time. So that's the prayer. When the altar of Laban was carried, somebody is not your enemy. Sir, do you know he didn't run because the children ran away? He didn't run after them. Say, oh, we in Lemon Bori Buruku Yilo. As the man entered his temple the following day to go and worship. Ah, Pepe Mida. How much is Pepe Mila? Sir, he saddled the donkey. He started running. Oh, I'm wishing I'm going to He ran after them. Until the Holy Spirit said, When you see that man, you neither say good <laughs> nor bad. So it was then he came down and said, Well, uh, you know how can you, how can these children go without kissing them? Is a lie. He's not kissing. Mm -hmm. It is that he said. But finally, I have something. And he can along Somebody stole my altar. So, David, I mean, Jacob says, since the time you have been watching your altar, did I follow you there? But please look at every baggage here. If you see there, the person shall die. And Rachel was the one that picked it. I don't know what what. What is truly her in other person's God? Why somebody is already taking you to the living God? But that's not our issue this morning. But do you know, Labor ran when he discovered his altar has disappeared. A man will fight with his life to save his altar. Somebody is not hearing me. And to the glory of God this morning, I'm glad to let you know that this is an altar. And you are confronting every negative altar. So, every negative words that have been declared over my life from the altar of my father's house from the altar of my mother's house lord this morning i render them useless by the blood of the lamb by the blood that was shed at mount calvary in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray that prayer open your mouth and pray that prayer by the mercy of the lord thank you father in jesus mighty name we pray. That's too low. Let somebody say louder, man. Amen. Lastly, before I declare over you this morning, I want you to go and declare. Every negative water against me lose control. Command them to lose that control. They must lose that control. They must lose that control. Whatever they have offered on that altar because of me, lose control today. By the blood of the Lamb, I command you to lose control. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray that prayer. Open your mouth. Reke posko poriba shanda. I stop you from walking. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Everyone. Everyone in the land of Israel and in the land of they came to destroy Jeruba. How many of us know Jeruba? Gideon. Why? Because he destroyed their altar. And the father of Jeruba said, Why do you fight for your God? 
Why do you fight for your altar? If your God is a true God, he's going to fight him. I stand upon the real altar of heaven this morning. And I speak against every altar in your life. Every author that didn't allow your life to settle I cry like the prophet from Judah this morning I cry against that altar I cry against that ancestral altar I cry against that demonic altar I cry against that altar That has been controlling your fears This morning by they are shattered everyone online get connected correctly this morning I declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that altar is shattered 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 Every altar that has conditioned your life for poverty. Every altar that didn't allow your marriage to be stable. Every altar that didn't allow your career to move forward. Every altar that didn't allow peace to reign in your life. I stand upon the rock of ages this morning. The Bible says every other ground is a sacred sand. And I declare that altar is shattered. We rent it apart. We rent it apart. We set it on fire. In the name of Jesus. Every negative words that have been released, that have been released from that negative water against your life, every negative word that have been released, that you want my love, you won't succeed. I come as a prophet of the Most High this morning. I change that order. I change that negative declaration. I turn it around for your good. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, you are the author above every author. Jesus, you are the author above every author. Jesus, you are the author above every author. So this morning, every author that didn't allow peace to reign in your life, in the name of Jesus, I command them to sink to the ground. I command them to stop working. I command them to lose control. 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 That altar against your life will no more prosper. That altar from your father's house will no more prosper. That altar where they have un offered the blood of animals, even blood of human beings. Every altar where they've uttered the blood of human beings, they've, they've offered the blood of fowl, the blood of demonic animals. I declare this morning by the reason of the anointing, that altar is shut up. So from this morning, receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. Receive your freedom. The journey of your life will no more be according to the dictate of that altar. The event of your life will no more be according to the dictate of that altar. In the name of Jesus, let the blood of Jesus come upon you now and set you free. Let the blood of Jesus come upon you and set you free. Let the blood of Jesus come upon you and set you free. Let the blood of Jesus come upon you and set you free. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I hear the law that things you are supposed to have experienced for many years, from this morning, they begin to come. So, you just see men. You just see men approaching you to favor you. You just see people that have forgotten you. They just remember you. You just see some of your rights that have been held to ransom. You see them coming to you now. In the name of Jesus. Rise up on your feet and glorify the name of the Lord this morning. Just worship him. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him all the glory. 
that altar has been destroyed there is nothing the devil can do about it the lord has come against that altar this morning it will no more prosper thank him for his deliverance thank him for bringing your peace thank him for bringing your joy thank you holy spirit Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, blessed be your holy name. 